gosh. Um, I, I, I suppose it was different in that before directing it, I realized that um, uh, <laughs> that has been a major oversight um, in my career uh, because I, I've done a lot of father-son stuff, um, and this is. Uh, I, I think it's it was great to have uh, a character played by Tina Fey who plausibly has decided she doesn't want to be a mother, and um, there's no particular value judgment ascribed to that. It's um, but. Uh, she uh, also, along with that, has um, uh, set up a life where she's essentially not vulnerable. And um, so it's, it's very similar to About a Boy, actually, in that it's somebody who's constructed a life that's, uh, that is uh, appealing to her, but, but fragile. Paul, when you think of this movie, this movie I liked a lot. It, made, it brought back Thank to you. me when I was first getting ready to go to school. I went to an all-white school, and a guidance counselor didn't tell me I could have went to any college of my choice because I was a minority, uh -huh. which was interesting. And this aspect is almost like we can accept almost who we would like to accept, and I thought that was interesting. What was most challenging for you for this? Um, well, for me, uh, I didn't want to kind of... Uh, uh, make any easy judgments about the admissions process. Um, I mean, I happen to think that uh, what you get out of college is so much about who you meet. Like, there could be a great professor at a community college who changes your life, or you can go to Princeton and um, be so burnt out from trying to get in that uh, you don't really uh, learn much or grow much during your time there. And actually, um, uh, when I was interviewed by the, <laughs> by the Princeton newspaper, um, the student newspaper, <laughs> she kind of said, yeah, I worked so hard to get in, and now I'm just kind of figuring out what I want to do. Um, uh, I, I, and also, the, the people, but the people who are doing the admissions process are actually genuinely trying to um, identify people who are going to uh, form a diverse community and, and succeed there. Um, and I, I think that... Uh, so and, and, and also, I was just interested in the metaphor of people um, making decisions about other people's lives. So somebody who's in judgment of other people um, so that they could avoid uh, judging themselves in a certain way. Um, one really hard thing was I had no idea until about two weeks ahead of time whether Princeton was actually going to let us use their name and shoot mm -hmm. there. Um, so not only was it sort of being able to get on campus, but also every single piece of stationery in it um, <laughs> would have had been thrown out the window. Um, and... Uh, they were pretty um, cool to allow us to do something that involved sort of a scandal as part of the plot point. Um, and I, you know, they were only lame names for fake elite colleges that were coming up. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, that was, I was really relieved when, when they let us shoot there. Two part so, question. Oh, oh, go ahead. I was just saying, so you did interview or, or sort of um, gather some research from the admissions counselors and that sort of thing, right? Yeah, no question. Um, um, we went there. We were actually, when we were shooting, they were in the middle of their um, peak season of, of reading through all the essays and arguing uh, over who should get in. Um, so I wasn't able to interview uh, a Princeton admissions person, but I interviewed other Ivy League uh, uh, admissions mm -hmm. people. And we weren't able to actually point our camera at the building where they do the admissions. Um, it was as if it was like a, a nuclear research facility or something. <laughs> um, like you could, you could pan on the campus to a certain point and then you would have to stop, um, wow. literally. Um, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, so um, uh, I, yeah, I, and then actually the, the head of admissions, you know, I think it's fun having a film being shot on your campus. So. At some point, she came by and hung out and like did a cameo walk on. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I got to uh, have her in the movie. Well, oh, two, part, oh, oh. two part question: uh, Why did you want to shoot this film? Why did other than uh, the obvious choice of getting a job? Why did you want to be on this film in particular? Mm -hmm. And what would you say was your very very biggest challenge about shooting in a school that was functioning while you were there? Sure. Um, I'm interested in uh, doing films where I'm going to learn something, um, where there's some element of uncertainty that I have in my own life or thinking. And uh, I think that uh, in you, I'm a parent myself now, I have three kids, this movie is very much about parenting, it's about somebody who's avoided being a parent, and Paul Rudd's character who is the only certain thing in his life is his love for this kid he's adopted. And that's the way in which the romantic comedy functions. It's, um, that's the way in which they relate and on which they sort of um, 
fall into bed together for the first time <laughs> is, is discussing and stressing out about parenting and her inability to grasp what the heck it is. And his feeling, now that he has a kid who's 11 years old, um, that he has to finally get around to listening to what his kid has to say. Um, he's, he's had it made because he has this life that he loves. He's an um, aid worker and, and has done a lot of NGO work. And uh, he lives his life in three-year stints. So he also, like Tina's character, uh, is able to use his life to avoid emotional, emotional continuity. Um, but uh, his kid is sick of it, and <laughs> he wants to stay in the same place. Um, I, as a parent of young kids, uh, I find myself sort of uh, struggling with whether I'm going to pretend to be my own dad <laughs> or whether there's some way to uh, find my own route through it. And so I think that's what drew me to it most of all, is this feeling of there's some sort of comfort in not feeling like you're having to create everything in your emotional life. So and I'm going to withdraw my second part of the question okay. um, and make it um, talk a little bit about the chemistry between Tina and um, and Lily on the set. Oh, and, great! And well, who chose them? Um, well, uh, I it, Tina was the part screamed out to have somebody like Tina Fey um, because it needed to be somebody who was smart enough that you believe they'd fool themselves into thinking that they had a happy life. Um, <laughs> and uh, and Lily is such a force of nature. Actually, I, I, Tina, uh, you know, when we were talking about who might play the mom, she was incredibly excited about it because not only had she met Lily through uh, Saturday Night Live, they had some reunion where she said the only person she was nervous to meet was Lily Tomlin. And so I think she understood that it wasn't only good that she admired the person she was going to act opposite, but that she'd be slightly intimidated by her. Because um, the character has kind of been steamrolled by her mother. And, and that's why she hasn't told her this huge secret that she has. Um, I they're really different. I feel like with Lily, there's a direct line to sort of the Robert Altman school of acting that's very instinctive um, and where you're just saying whatever comes to mind. It's not script-based, it's, it's truth-based. Um, and uh, Tina is very used to running her own show, so she's calibrated how things are going to work. <laughs> um, and so they have utterly different approaches, actually, um, which is also fun. That, that's really challenging.